Welcome to version 717 of the Spectrum Protect Operations Center. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to set up a copy to tape for a directory container storage pool. Copy to tape can be used as an alternative to using replication, and you can now copy the data from the directory container pools out to tape. The tapes can then be stored on site and used to repair a directory container storage pool if a damage occurs. In this demo, I'm going to show you both how to create a copy for a new directory container, as well as to add a copy to tape for an existing container storage pool. First, go into Storage, Storage Pools, and we're going to add a new directory container storage pool. We'll choose the server we want to place it on. This is going to be a directory container pool. Copy to tape is currently only supported for directory container storage pools. For legacy storage pools, you can create a different type of copy out to tape. We will enter a directory that already exists. Now notice if you do not have read permissions to this directory, or if the directory does not exist, you will get an error. We'll go ahead and enter another directory name. You've got to define at least one directory, and you can specify multiple directories so that the data can be distributed across the directories. So by specifying multiple directories that map to different physical disk drives, you can actually increase the parallelism and improve your I.O. Okay, now we're given the option to copy data to tape, and so we're going to go ahead and choose that. We'll give the pool a name, and now we're going to select an existing library. VTL is not supported for copy to tape. Next, we're going to set up a schedule, and this schedule is what's going to create the copy of the container pool out to the tape pool. The wizard will automatically populate the times here, and what it does is it finds the time of the database backup, and then it takes eight and a half hours prior to that as the start time, and then the end time is in half an hour prior to the kickoff of the database backup. So it's important for the protect storage pool command to complete first so that not only is the data protected in the tape, but also your database backup can run and that is protected also in case there is a disaster. And you can increase or decrease the end and start times, but the wizard will give you the eight hour runtime. Okay, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and click add storage pool. Our Directory pool and our copy pool have been successfully created. And here you can see our new container pool and the new container copy pool. The copy to tape for the directory containers occurs with the protect storage pool command underneath the covers. You'll see that if you did a normal protect storage pool out to a replication server, that would be protect storage pool type equals repl server. For the copy to tape, it's a protect storage pool type equals local. What we're copying out to tape is actually the deduplicated data. So in order to restore the data from the tape, you have to first recover it back to the container storage pool. You cannot restore the directory container's tape copy directly to the client. If your directory container storage pool was damaged and you needed to repair it by utilizing the data that's stored out on tape, you would issue the repair storage pool source location equals local. And this would copy the data from the tape back to the directory container. And remember, we're copying the deduplicated data off of the tape and just putting it back into the directory container. Also remember, if you've taken any of the directory container copy tapes off-site, they will need to be brought back on-site prior to the data being able to be copied back into the directory container. Okay, let's take a look at some more details on that directory container that we created. If we click on the details page, we've added the container copy pool to this screen. If we look at the properties for the directory container pool, You'll see also there we now have related storage and the container copy pool shows up as well. 
If we click on the tape copy for this directory container, you'll also notice that we'll show the capacity used over two weeks once that copy storage pool is utilized. You'll see the library that's associated with this. We can click on the container copy pool and find out the information about it, including which tape class it belongs to, how many scratch volumes are allocated to the copy storage pool, and the tape drives allocated to it. Tape drive allocation is important because it dictates how many drives the server will attempt to use and thus how many protect processes can run simultaneously for the copy to tape process. Now one important feature here is the reclamation. In this case, reclamation will start when a full tape is 60% dead space. That means 60% of the content has expired. The remaining 40% will be copied onto a new tape during the regular protect storage pool process. It is not during a separate reclamation process like other copy storage pools. If we take a look at a different Spectrum Protect server that already has had container copy storage pools up and running for a while, we can look at the details of this existing container copy pool and you'll be able to see the amount of data that was copied to the container copy storage pool. One thing to note is that the amount of data copied to a container copy storage pool might be a little bit less than resides in the corresponding directory container because there's less overhead involved when writing out to tape. The checks at the bottom of the screen show when the schedule succeeded in copying the information out to the container copy pools. Over here we see that there's five volumes associated with this storage pool and these volumes are all in the filling status therefore there's no reclaimable space at this point. Under the server maintenance you will see the administrative schedule to run container copy and this is the schedule that's automatically set up to copy your directory container storage pool out to the tape pool. Once the run container copy schedule has been set up on a server, that schedule applies to any additional directory and container copy pairs set up on that server. It can only be modified through the command line. Another thing to note is we now have the container copy listed on our storage pools and you can directly press this link and it'll list the container copies. Also on the overview page underneath volumes, if any of the copy pool devices were having any errors, we would see a message like we do underneath tapes. And if you clicked on that, that would take you to the erroring devices for those copy pools. If you have an existing directory container storage pool that does not have a tape pool associated with it, you can click on more and then add container copy pool. And this will allow you to add a copy data to tape. So in summary, version 717 now has the ability to copy directory container pool content out to a tape. This provides the ability to recover a damaged directory container storage pool directly from the tape. Thank you.